Whether you want a dress to impress or actually control flaring and contrast in your image, the Mini Matte Box Lite from Small Rig is kind of a perfect matte box for people working with smaller and more compact cinema cameras like the FX30, the Pocket 4K, and obviously for people using hybrid cameras for video. It's very, very small and compact, so it won't add a ton of extra bulk to your rig, and you can use this matte box together with with your variable ND filters, which is obviously great since most of these compact cameras don't have built-in ND. The Mini Matte Box comes with a top flag, a couple of these adapter rings, which we'll use here in just a second. There's also a filter tray, by the way, <laughs> I will show you in just a second, and this little carrying pouch, storage pouch, whatever you want to use this pouch for, it's included. Okay, so let's see how this matte box actually works together with a variable ND filter. And as you may know, this matte box clamps onto the front of your lens with one of these adapter rings. So this lens here have a 72 millimeter filter thread so we'll go ahead and take this 72 to 95 millimeter adapter ring and we'll screw that onto our lens like this. Sorry about the weird audio. And to attach our 82 millimeter variable ND, we'll first need to use a 72 to 82 millimeter step up ring on that 72 millimeter adapter ring. So that's, that's one good thing, the uh, lens thread diameter, both on the lens side and on the filter side, on these adapter rings are the same. So if you already have filters and step up rings, you won't be needing any extra ones. So you can use the ones you have already. Now we can add our variable ND filter. This here is the Cookin Nuances 2 to 400, one of my favorite variable NDs and we're pretty much ready to attach the matte box now to the little uh, adapter ring here. So let's just slide the uh, matte box on top like this. And there's a little screw here on the back. And we're pretty much ready to go. We can now use our variable ND filter pretty much like we normally do. Well, almost, it's more like a like a one finger operation thing my jig here, but still works great. And I've just shot two music videos where I was pretty much riding the variable ND filter during each take and this worked great. So I didn't have any problems where I overshot the exposure or anything. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this works together with the variable ND filter. You can also use the matte box with square filters. There's a built-in 4x5.6 5mm filter thread, which actually took me a couple of minutes to figure out how to extract. So on the top here of the matte box, there's a little arrow and a text that says slide, and it points this direction here. But if you go on the opposite side of where the arrow actually points, there's a tiny little tab up here, which you kind of lift or push forward and then you can extract the filter tray like this. Drop in your filters, click it back in place and you're ready to go. The matte box comes with four of these little adapter rings in different sizes. There's a 67, a 72, a 77 and an 82 millimeter adapter ring included with the matte box. But if you go on Small Rig's website, you can find a vast array of different sizes. So you should be able to find one that fits whatever lens you're using up to a 95 millimeter filter thread. So shouldn't be a problem. You can also find a couple of extra accessories on the uh, Small Rig's website for the mini matte box light like some side flags, which we'll, we'll talk about flags more here in just a second. The idea of a matte box is to keep the sun or other harsh light sources from hitting the front element of your lens and creating flares and loss of contrast. So if you're shooting exterior midday and you have the sun, 
high up in the sky, the top flag here will act as a visor or yeah, same principle as shading your eyes with your hands like this. But if you're shooting earlier in the day or later in the evening where you have the sun lower placed in the sky, the top flag will not offer the same amount of protection, obviously. This is where you may want to consider using a side flag on your matte box, which actually can be purchased separately for them in a matte box light or, or you can just loosen up this little screw here and turn the matte box to the side like this. Now, if we pull back the flag and pretend the key light here is the sun, and if we start to push the flag forward like this, we remove the direct light hitting the element here. Now, let me show you a real world example here instead of this ridiculous studio demo. This lens here, the Rokinon 85mm T1.5, actually flares pretty easily. And we have the sun coming down here, frame right. And let's see what happens if we turn the matte box sideways towards the light here. As you can see, the matte box does a pretty good job at keeping the image together when we turn it to face the sun on its side like this. So the way this matte box mounts to your lens actually makes it pretty versatile. You can pretty much turn it in any direction and face the sun, even if it's just a top flag. Now, a lot of people seem to be worried that the position and the fact that you're kind of grabbing the ND filter blind, you would end up putting a lot of fingerprints on your ND filter. The way I kind of go about it, I put my fingers on the side of the matte box like this, and then I just follow the matte box to the filter where I can grab onto the side and, and turn it around like this. So not a huge concern in my opinion. Okay, next question, and I can see my uh, camera is starting to uh, overheat here. Can you use 4x4 four four filters? Yes, you can use 4x4 four four filters. There is an additional adapter or a filter tray that you can buy from Small Rig to use 4x4 four four filters. Small Rig claims they've designed the adapter rings in a way that won't cause any uh, vignetting up to a 15 millimeter wide angle lens on full frame shouldn't be a problem. Now I'm on APS-C, so the only test I can offer is this one here where I put the 13 millimeter F1.4 from Veltrox. The lens passed the test with flying colors. I wanted to end this video with a short little list of pros versus cons and my personal observations and, and thoughts about this product. So let's start with the way you actually attach the matte box to your lens, which I think works great. I've not had any issues with the matte box coming loose or falling off or any of that. So basically it allows you to have a super duper compact minimalist uh, rig. Also gonna make it very quick and easy for you to break down your rig for transport and assemble everything out on location and break it down again when it's time to go home. The only drawback with this type of mounting system would be if you're using something like a vintage lens with a rotating front element that's probably going to cause some problems with this type of mounting system when it comes to build quality like with all small rig products build quality is great great choice of materials everything feels sturdy it's mainly made out of plastic uh, these things are aluminum alloy and the top flag here <laughs> needs some grease maybe and it's made out of carbon fiber so very very sturdy and will protect your your lens uh, and i believe price wise it's probably the most affordable mini matte box on the market i'm not sure but <laughs> i put some some links in the description of this video so you can check out the pricing and see for yourself I also like the fact that this matte box supports 4x56 filters as well as, as 4x4. So if you want to use square filters, you 
can start investing in, in high quality square filters and those filters will fit in your next matte box when you upgrade to a bigger camera with a bigger matte box and, and all that fun stuff. So yeah, you know, I, I can't find any reason to not recommend this product. So I'm super happy with it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I want to thank you for watching and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye.